Okay, so this is uh, my thousand mile review of the KTM 690 Enduro. Um, I bought this bike uh, three weeks ago, I think. I think it's three weeks ago now, maybe two weeks ago. And we've got a thousand miles on her now. And I just kind of want to explain what it is, what it isn't, um, maybe kind of what it should be, and a few things that I do and don't like about it. So. Uh, first thing is, it's not a motocross bike. It, it does weigh like 350 pounds with all the fluids in it. So, uh, I mean, while it's a, an extremely capable uh, off-road motorcycle, it's not really a motocrosser. That said, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of motocross on it. <laughs> but when you can uh, really feel the weight is when you have it in the air or when the ground gets soft and the speeds get slow. So it, uh, it doesn't push, or it does push through the uh, uh, softer stuff, unlike a, a lighter bike. So where this uh, thing really shines is high speed. So when you get going really fast on it, the, the weight really stabilizes the bike. So we don't really have any high speed sandy stuff here, but we have some high speed dirt roads. and even though the suspension isn't set up when I'm up around 50, 60 miles an hour in those dirt roads, um, which is plenty fast because they, they have a lot of blind spots and rocks that randomly appear and things like that. Um, it handles really well in that, even with no suspension set up. So I'm really looking forward to getting the suspension set up. I don't have a lift stand for it yet. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, it's really hard to get a lift stand here in Hawaii because nobody wants to ship them and they're really really expensive so anyway um, back to that so it would be I imagine if you had these things in like Colorado or something where you just had like wide open dirt roads and sand and stuff like that with some suspension set up this thing would be super awesome uh, the power at least in stock trim um, I do have um, uh, air fuel mixture plug-in thing that I'm ordering for it that's not here yet it uh, takes a few weeks it's shipping from a guy in Australia um, right now the power does not favor really anything below about 4500 rpms it's um, during uh, break-in it uh, it was really smooth I would say the first 300 miles the the power off the bottom was really smooth you can hear it in my first review now that it's broken in um, it's a little bit surgy and it's not real smooth through the bottom and then when you hit that that uh, that higher um, part of the map and you, the air fuel mixture changes it really smooths back out again so you know 350 pound motorcycle in the high end of the revs um, probably isn't exactly where you should be riding it unless you're in the desert um, which is really fun and which is what I would like to do but we don't have that train here um, so if you've seen some of my other videos you've seen I had it in some pretty rocky stuff obviously the videos does not do that any justice uh, those are huge rocks that's really gnarly stuff um, and uh, it actually handles all that pretty well I ended up taking the racks off um, I don't know if I'll ever put them back on again, maybe if I have to run to Costco. This currently is my only vehicle, um, besides a Honda Ruckus, but um, um, I'm still really pretty happy with it. Um, I've added some better parts to it, like the Sacra Pro Brand um, Ultra handguards. Uh, these are um, not the stock mirrors. Um, I've seen some KTM websites selling these things for like 50 bucks a piece, which is crazy. Um, these ones came from China and they were $14.49 in free shipping for the set. <laughs> so they're actually pretty good mirrors. They fold in. Um, I think I'm going to put a thumb screw in here so that when I go ride, I can just, I can actually take them off because I really don't like to ride with them folded in, but they have um, quite a bit of space, you know, so you can see behind you and they don't really vibrate that much. 
Um, obviously, you can see that I have a per pair of Pro Taper Evos on here. Um, my only grief with them is that these um, these controls are pretty wide, and so you have limited amount of mounting space for um, the levers and stuff. So if you are going to order aftermarket bars for any Enduro, this happened on my KLR2, um, make sure that this piece is long enough in the stats and um, potentially this piece shorter obviously so you don't have a spar that's stinking super wide. Um, anyway, these are the um, these are the center mount these uh, pro bends. So one thing I had to do to these, I'll probably review these too. I was a little disappointed um, in the way these center mounts mount. They they, they were a little bit too wide um, and so they're they're really close and there wasn't really very much adjustment so I ended up getting some washers to shim them out so that they're not banging against my master cylinder and so that I can actually have some adjustment on my levers and keep these things straight in line with my hands so they're not at some goofy angle. Alright, so another thing um, that I did, and I'll do a review on these two, is I put the um, rally pegs on there. The stock pegs, or I was going to go get them for the video and forgot, but the stock pegs are literally this long. Um, I'm going to show you my barefoot real quick. That's why I deal with it. <laughs> So on the stock pegs when you're riding, your foot, because of the width of the bike, is literally on this much of the peg. It's it's pathetic. There's no there's no control at all. You're basically just sitting right here on this little circle the whole entire time you're riding the bike. I can't believe that KTM didn't put these rally pegs on here. Stock. These things are five inches long. And like I said, the stock ones <laughs> are like maybe that long. I think they're 90 millimeter and they're not as wide either. So these are a freaking must have on this bike. These are the factory KTM power parts rally pegs. There's lots of aftermarket ones that are probably better. They might lower it a little bit, which I would have liked, but I'm broke right now and I needed some bad. And these um, were the cheapest and they're just utilitarian. I'm a very utilitarian kind of guy. I don't need a whole bunch of bling and stuff. I like the stock kind of factory look. Very simple. Um, so those are a must. Um, you can see the stock tires obliterated. I've got stuff on order for that. Um, I chopped up the, the stock license plate stuff. Uh, that doesn't really apply to you. I really haven't had a problem. Oh man, I just walked through a whole pile of ants. <laughs> um, I'm covered in ants right now, sorry. I haven't had a problem with the, the fuel tank thing like a lot of other people do. Um, they, they claim that, that dirt can fall inside of there. Um, it has a lip in there. I haven't had that issue. Um, the suspension's okay. The brakes are fantastic as long as you remember to turn the ABS off when you go off-road. Um, if you don't, uh, you won't stop <laughs> because the, when you get into slippery situations, but that big galfer rotor on there, it will stop you fantastic if you turn the ABS off off-road. Um, everything's working really well. Um, the, the shrouds aren't fastened up here at the top. Um, I don't really know why KTM did that, but there's a little rubber bumper right there. Um, I did bend this lower bolt when I dumped it in a crash. I'm considering getting the radiator guards for this so that uh, I don't have to buy a big expensive radiator. But yeah, we're in nine minutes now, so this is kind of long-winded. Um, I'm averaging um, between 48 and 55 miles per gallon. Um, I was running ethanol-free fuel in it, which is 89 octane, but um, I pumped a load of super into it, uh, 92, with ethanol, and it actually I feel like it might almost run better. Um, and I have the twin air filter for it also, the foam filter that replaces the stock paper. And I ran that for a while too, and I feel like maybe with the more airflow, 
on the leaner air fuel mixture, it felt like it increased the, the surginess. So I put the paper back in there for my last ride and I feel like it smoothed it up. That might be completely just me making crap up. I don't know, but um, once I get that, uh, that little plug-in dongle thing um, and the fuel mixture changes, I'm gonna put the foam filter back in. Um, so anyway, still really happy with this bike. Um, I do have a motocross bike on the radar. Um, it'll be an old one because I can't afford anything else, but uh, this is definitely gonna be fun to practice on if you can move around this big old beast in, uh, in tricky situations and then you get on a little tinker toy like a 250SX or something. I think you're gonna have a big advantage, but anyway, it, uh, it cranks. I've had it to uh, 109 miles an hour on the street. It gets there in a hurry. And uh, <laughs> one thing I will say is I ended up, uh, here comes an 1190. No, oh, no, I lied, that was like a Honda Shadow. <laughs> um, one thing I did is um, the tire pressure. So KTM right here on the frame in multiple spots says 30 pounds, right? Um, and it says up to 36, I think, on the tires. I ended up running, um, currently I'm running 18 in the front and I'm running 15 in the rear. And I think that's probably why it chewed the tire up so fast is because I had too high a pressure. And this thing, if you run up near that 30 PSI, all it does is just do burnouts on the road. It, there's no traction at all. As soon as you lower the air pressure again, I don't weigh very much, so it might may be different for other people, but you know, at 100 and low 40s. Um, I'm not putting a lot of traction over the rear wheel. So when I lowered the pressure in this thing, it immediately started pulling wheelies again. And so it's currently 18 and 15. And I will be installing rim locks on there because I'm going to run a little bit lower pressures than that. And the power on this thing will start spinning. It'll start ripping valve stems off if I don't put rim locks in it. But it is drilled uh, for the rim locks already. You can see right there. So that's part of my uh tire changing that uh, i don't have those parts so i'm i've yet to change that rear tire out plus i've just been commuting on the road mostly so we'll just burn it right to the carcass so anyway that's it uh upload this and be on my way happy riding